Hey, it's John from Tinderbox Arts. So a recent video I did, I was checking um, the battery on a bunch of bikes, and this was one of them. This is a Triumph Bonneville. It's a 2010 model. And, um, you know, I did notice when I was doing the checks, and you saw in the video, that the voltage uh, for from the alternator or stator um, was a little bit low. You know, ideal, well, the range could be as little as 13.5 volts on up to as high as 15 volts. But ideally, you want to see it around 14 or 14.2, something like that. Um, and I noticed on this one it was a little bit low. You know, it was more like low 13s. So I thought I'd do some investigation, see if I can figure out why, and, and try to correct it. So on this bike, uh, the stator or alternator, whatever you want to call it, is under here. So there's um, a coil in there with windings. And we can do a little bit of testing on that without taking this cover off. Um, you know, it's working somewhat. I know that because I'm getting some charge, but uh, we want to take a look at that. And the other thing we'll take a look at is the rectifier. Let me get around here, which is right here. All right. So on this bike, um, you have the coil or the stators putting out an alternating current voltage. That gets sent to the rectifier and the rectifier um, regulates that voltage into a DC voltage and into the proper range that we want. So if we have a low voltage, a low charging voltage, it could possibly be the windings uh, of the stator and it could also be uh, the rectifier. But we could try to narrow it down a little bit uh, by doing some testing here. All right, the first thing I had to do is pull out a wiring diagram so I can figure out where connectors are that I need to use uh, in order to do some testing. So on this bike, it's a um, EFI engine. It's a 2010 model, uh, but it's an EFI engine, but it has a cable driven speedometer, not the electronic speedometer. And so on this wiring diagram that I have in uh, the book I have, uh, you'll see you have the alternator here. The alternator right here has three, it's gonna have three wires coming out and that's gonna connect to the regulator or rectifier. And you know, finding these cables can be difficult. Uh, but it's easy to find the regulator, and if I follow the cables from that regulator um, where they go, they end up in the headlight bezel, or bezel, whatever you want to call it, um, and there's a connector right here that we're looking at. So we're going to go for that connector here and do some testing. Now you see there's three wires from the three windings in the alternator or uh, stator coming in, and then there's one wire right here which goes to the battery and one wire which goes to ground. So that's, there's, there's five wires in there and that's what they all are. All right, this is uh, the headlight bezel. I apologize for the lighting, I know it's not great. Um, so the connector that we were just looking at in the book here, that's what we're looking at right here. So we have the three windings, one, two, three, and one of these is battery, one of these is ground. I'd have to look on the other side here to see which is which. So this side of the connector goes to the rectifier this side of the connector goes to the stator or alternator. So I can do some testing on this. The first thing I want to try to look at is the alternator or stator. Now, uh, I know, I don't know if I can get the, no, I can't really get the, the ohmmeter in there, but uh, so you're gonna, gonna have to just trust me, I guess. I have the ohmmeter set here, all right? And what I want to see is the, the windings should have a resistance associated with them. Uh, the book, my book anyway, says between 0.3 and 0.6. So I'm gonna take a reading on each of these across the pair. So there I have 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So all of those are good. All right, the next test I wanna do is between each of these terminals and ground. Now, I could use the ground here, but I just connected it to the battery just because it's easier. So I have an alligator clip right now on the meter to ground, and I'm just going to check continuity here. Maybe I can hold this up while I do this because I have another hand now, and I don't want to see continuity. So there's one, there's two, there's three. So all of those do not have a connection to ground, which is what we want to see. We want to see infinite resistance there. Now, I... I knew that basically because I knew the thing was running somewhat, but I wanted to show you the test. Okay, now I'm going to test the output of 
um, the alternator or stator um, with the bike running. Now, this is tricky to show on camera, but <laughs> I'll give it my best here. So I have the meter set on AC volts, all right, alternating current volts. And I'm going to try to rest that there. I'm not sure it's going to stay in place. It may just fall off. Um, and what I want to do is, just like I did before, I'm going to test each of these against each other. Um, yeah, so I'll do three different tests. And we want to see these pretty similar to each other and in the range of 60 to 70 volts. So I'm going to start this up and see if I can manage to do this on camera. But incidentally, we are running off the battery uh, for the moment. So interesting, I was going by the book there, um, and you'll notice all my readings were just about uh, 45 volts AC. And um, the book mentions 60 to 70. Now that's not a triumph thing, that's a, you know, that's what the book thinks a typical um, stator will be putting out. However, uh, I have done some research uh, previously, and I think there are two different um, alternator or stator types. And one is in the 60 to 70 range, I'm told. The other one is 45 volts. So I believe I just have the other one. They are all almost identical. So for that reason, I think the, um, you know, the stator is actually okay. So that basically eliminates uh, the stator as the issue. Um, so that leaves the wiring itself, because I could have you know, poor connections or the wiring itself could be bad. Um, or uh, the rectifier. Now there's not a heck of a lot you can do as far as testing the rectifier. Um, that's on this side of the connector. And we can test um, just to make sure the circuit boards are intact. But other than that, I'm not going to be able to do too much testing uh, in the shop here. I basically have to go on the assumption that it is a problem. All right, so I, I got a different meter here. I thought it might be easier to prop up. So I have this set to this setting right here, which is continuity or a diode test. And what happens, this is a very simple test. It doesn't really tell you that much, honestly. But what I want to see is, one of these is, is um, you know, positive and negative, basically, to, uh, you know, negative being ground. So I want to put this, I'm going to put the one lead, boy, I can, is that on camera? Yeah. One lead here, and I want to see no continuity, no reading at all on these three. Then when I switch them, I want each one of them to give me some reading. There's a reading, there's a reading, there's a reading. So that's good. Now on the other terminal, I can't remember which is positive and which is negative. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'll turn it on that and I'll test all three again. None, none, none. Then I'll switch the leads again, and I get reading, reading, reading. So what have we learned here? Um, basically, I believe the stator and alternator is putting out what it should be. It's 45 volts. I, you know, I could be wrong. I, you know, we'll find out. But I believe that's actually okay. Um, the, you know, the rectifier. I, I tested. It's, it's working. It's functioning. It's doing something, but um, it may not be doing exactly what I want. So the only really two things left to do are, one, replace the rectifier or regulator with another one that may work better, um, and also to check the wiring between uh, the rectifier and the battery. So I can do that, but I, I know this bike pretty well, and um, I, I'm not expecting to find any problems with the wiring. So that really leaves uh, replacing that rectifier. Now, um, it's not inexpensive for this bike. It's about 150 bucks. So, you know, I think it is going to be worth it to me um, just because I, I don't like the voltage under charging that I'm seeing. So I think I'm going to order one up. Um, there are several with a, a newer technology 
let me just show you here. So this rectifier right now is mounted under the headlight bezel or bezel. Um, you know, the, the new one I get could be mounted there as well, and it's mounted here mostly for cooling purposes because these tend to get warm. Um, there are other ones with a newer technology um, that I could mount elsewhere if I chose to, and I get rid of this ugliness. Whether I'll do that or not, uh, you know, I haven't decided yet, um, but it is an option. So I'm going to get one ordered up and probably be another week before it comes in. We'll do some more video then. All right, so the new regulator that I got uh, has just come in, and this one is fairly well known um, among Triumph aficionados anyway. It's a uh, Rick's Motorsport Electrics, um, and uh, I, it, it's a different type of regulator or rectifier, both actually. Um, it's a MOSFET um, type, and the older style, I believe, is not. The OEM style is not. So it's basically plug and play. Um, the, you know, this slot spacing for the screws is about the same, has the same connector. Um, there are a few things you notice that are different right away, though, which is, number one, the size of it. It's physically a little bit smaller than the older one, not quite as wide. Uh, the height is about the same. You also notice that the gauge of the wire is much thicker. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's much thicker than the OEM, uh, which is something to think about because a gauge of wire that's too small can actually cause a voltage drop. So it is something to think about. Now, the first question to ask is, and I already have the answer, is where to mount this. So this particular type can be mounted other places in the front. It does. It has air fins for cooling, but it doesn't need cooling to the extent that the OEM one does. So I could mount this other places, possibly under the seat, under the gas tank, but Honestly, I'm just not in the mood right now, and it's just more work and time that I want to spend. So I am going to mount it in the same location, and I'll put this connector back into the headlight bezel uh, where the old one came from. However, one thing I might do is these yellow wires are pretty bright, so I might uh, maybe just cover them in you know, electrical tape or something just to kind of tone that down a little bit. All right, uh, we have our new rectifier regulator in. Uh, everything else should be in good shape, so we have a well-charged battery here. I'm going to turn the key on, find the key here. All right, that's key on. And we get rid of that immediate surface charge. We're down to 12.10 probably in that range anyway. That's with a headlight on. Now we'll start it up. All right, so on this bike, we've proven that the uh, rectifier regulator is the problem, or was the problem. At uh, idle, we're getting high 13 volt, which is fine. And as soon as I come off idle, um, in the 2,000, 3,000 RPM range, which is where you'd normally be running or a little higher, uh, we're into mid to low 14 volt, which is exactly what we want to see. So this definitely solved the problem. However, before you jump on just replacing this on your bike, it is important to go through all that testing uh, and make sure that it's not something else that is the problem. Now, could I increase the voltage even a little bit more if I relocated this to a, a place closer to the battery uh, so you don't have as long a length of wire? You know, possibly that, that might be the case. However, right now I'm just too tired to deal with it, but um, it, it really isn't necessary. If I can get in the low 14s, I'm good to go. So uh, that's how you test your charging system and how you Replace your regulator rectifier if you need to, uh, but I'm pretty happy with what I see now.